everybody. Ain't nobody ever gonna get between my son and me. Yo, come on, man. This might be Tracy G. Uh, easily the most anticipated premieres we're seeing right now on the you know on, on the screen. We're talking Power Book Three, Raising Raising Canaan, and this is Sunday, July 18th on Stars. It's the reason I have Stars, DB. And speaking of Stars, we got two of them with us right now. Can you do the honors? Well, one of them is a returning citizen. You know, he's he's practically family. I know him, Heather B, and Marlon Wayans have been. Uh, Deep good friends for for many years, and he's been on our show before. He's a nine-time NAACP Image Award winner, two-time Teen Choice Award winner, one-time MTV Movie Award winner, one-time Black Reel Award, and one-time Screen Actors Guild Award. You know him from Juice, Higher Learning, The Wood, Into Deep, Love and Basketball, and the TV series ER in House. And with him is his <laughs> co-star. He is an actress and a singer. She originated the role of Dolores in the Broadway production of Sister Act. She is a Tony Award winner, and you also probably saw her in The Hunger Games Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2. But now they are both starring in Power Book 3, Raising Canaan. Please welcome Omar Epps and Patina Miller. Yes! Yay! Yo! <laughs> what up, man? Yo. Yo. Heavy hitters. Come on. I, hey, Patina. Where you get all those award stats from? From Wikipedia? Hi. <laughs> no, <laughs> from hey, your oh, life. <laughs> come on, Patina old man. Patina got the trophies. I, I ain't got the trophies like that. Patina got the trophies. Patina got some big trophies. Him. Yeah, Patina, you yeah. got some big trophies. You know that. I got a trophy, but that resume, though, when you were calling out all the damn movies that I love so much, Omar F., I can't even believe we are in a show together. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's my honor and my... Like I always tell you, I can't wait for people to experience um, the Patina Millet experience. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she killed it in this role. And, um, you know, it, it's, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for you all. Uh, Patina, welcome to the show, by the way. I'm Sway. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you on the show. So familiar with your work um, over the years. Congratulations on, on all of your accolades and and. Working with someone like Omar, Omar working with someone like Patina. You know, Omar is one of the few men that I ever had a poster up on the wall in my room, Patina, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Omar, you know, you had an Eric B. and Rakim poster. You might have had yeah. a Slick Rick. You know, it was, you know, because he, you've been such a, with peers, with, you know, um, uh, from the same generation, but you've been such an inspiration. And every time we talk about all of these movies, you were a part you've been a part of um it's just amazing man I, I i don't know how you when you hear your accolades how do you respond to it you know at one point you was a kid with a dream and now we got this litany of accomplishments how, how does that make you feel uh i mean on it and and um just i just feel blessed brother like you know what i mean with like you said with peers um and um you know i just feel blessed to have been a part of uh beautiful black imagery let's put it that way mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, and that's the, that's to me that's the most powerful thing when you know young brothers or sisters you know come up and they may say a scene or a movie or something like that and you know inspire them for the better in their lives and in their journey um you know that's what it's all about that's what we're here to do to push each other forward mm. omar man omar f's ladies and gentlemen and Yo, yo, when you play a cop, man, you it's some you bring something different to the cop game, man. I gotta <laughs> give you this, Omar. Like, you know, well, you was Jay Reed was one way. Now you know, now you just you know, <laughs> you a, a whole different, a whole different animal as a cop. Like, I want to know. Uh, it's been a lot of tension surrounding law enforcement in recent yeah. years. It's always been there. People calling for defunding the police. You know, and you know, I want to do do any, any of those components play a role in how you develop detective malcolm howard and how you play him what's going that's on that's a in great the question that's a great question so it, well, actually i mean i think that th that those components have always been there you know when you talk about law enforcement in the black community uh in particular it's always been there there's always been some sort of a you know tension or what have you but you know the fun part for me was that you know even though our show takes place in the 90s Howard, Detective Howard, he's not from that era. You mm -hmm. know, he's from the Al Green, you know, Marvin Gaye era. So mm -hmm. he's even coming into a new world, like, 
what's all this hippity hop hop junk these you know what I mean? like <laughs> you know and so he he's he's learning on the go as the audience learns him um but basically like you know he's someone who was indoctrinated with a certain belief i, I call him an octopus you mm-hmm. know because he he has tentacles everywhere he's he's from the hood so he knows that he's in law enforcement so he knows that but he's really about manipulating both sides to his own benefit so you know mm-hmm. he's a, he's a selfish slime ball <laughs> <laughs> so eloquently put right there listen way to keep it a buck <laughs> by the way i'm gonna open up the phone lines if you love power uh man we got patina miller and omar epps here we'll let you talk with them directly 888-742-3345 patina you you play a strong a strong black mother i've seen i've seen this mother growing up in oakland i've seen her in my house you know yep. and she, she just wants to protect her son but at the same time, your family is deep in the world of crime, this character. How do you humanize a character like that without inspiring someone to want to go down that same path? I mean, also, you have to look at the heart. For me, the biggest part was not looking at the crime part, not looking at all the stuff on the surface that's easy to write off and, you know, say whatever you want. I wanted to look at um, her inner motivation, what she was doing it for. You know, Raquel is a single black mom it's in the 90s at that time. You know what I mean? It's circumstance. Mm-hmm. She, she's just doing what she got to do at that point. You know, she's a breadwinner for her family. She's very smart. She's very curious. She's powerful. She knows what she's doing. So she's using all of those things that she, she possessed to get money. She also is a strong black woman who wants to raise her son. And that whole balance. And for me, it's about finding your love, finding connection at the end of the day. She's doing it for her son, you know, and to be successful in, in, in her business world and also be successful as a mom, that for me was really important to try to find um, what that was because, you know, her story is, is like a lot of other stories. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not just her, you know, you just, she said, it's your mom, it's my mom, you know, like. I, I know my circumstance growing up. My mom was a young mother. You know, she was 15 when she had me, so I understand what that is. I understand being a child of a young mother. I, there's so many women like Raquel out there, you know, single black strong women taking on everything, the weight of the world, and making it happen, making shit happen. And so for me, I wanted to show a three-dimensional um, whole person for Raquel, not just the strong, not just all this and that, but the heart, why she's in it family is important for her and she's willing to go to the end of the earth for her family particularly her son damn so it's about her my humanizing her is just giving her heart giving her her struggle her vulnerability figuring out what that is you know mm-hmm. i love it man patina miller boy y- y'all really develop these characters and i'm and even looking yeah. at your you as a person i mean being from south carolina growing up in a single parent home and winning a tony award Ooh. <laughs> a dream, man. This is this is a dream. I got to tell you, I I got that tough love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the the one scene in the very beginning of the scene of the of the show with Raquel and and er, young Kanan and what she tries to teach him about you know tough loving him. I got that, but all of the tough love for me was just about you know teaching me how to be strong, teaching me how to sort of you know accept my failure, but continue to try to strive for greatness, continue to try to do what I want to do. So it's a dream. It's a blessing that I'm here where I am thinking about where I come from, Mm -hmm. but having a single black strong woman, like my mom pushing me, you Mm -hmm. know, whether she was crying in the bathroom, trying, you know, I never knew the struggle for her. I knew there was a struggle, but she saved space to make it happen for me. And so I know that on a personal level, uh, what that is. You know what I mean? Just being my, having my mom and my grandmother and, and all of the black women in my life. I know what that is. Love it. Patina mm-hmm. Miller is here, ladies and gentlemen. Patina Miller, Omar Epps. Tracy, you want to jump in? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so happy to have you guys on the show. I'm curious because when I think about films and when I think about series, this is probably in the last maybe like seven years, I've really looked at it as a whole entity. I'm talking about not just the stars, but all of the names and the credits and everyone that comes in for the collaboration. And specifically when you're an actor, 
and you're coming to develop a character that has been written, dreamt of, already kind of like um, the that character's mission statement has been decided. Was it always easy for you guys in your career to say, hmm, I don't know if the character would do this, or hey, how about if this person did that? Because I'm thinking about how a writer probably like spent a full year <laughs> thinking about a character, and they're like, wait a minute, how do you know the character more than me? Was it always easy for you guys to just lend your um, thoughts and insight on um, on set? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's always it's always a collaboration. Those, those are that's when you get the best results because there's so many different perspectives like like you just said trace like the writer you know they're kind of in their head living with these characters you know then like a director or actor or, you know another another person comes on board and then they have their perspective and you're just constantly refining 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 um to get to the moment when the camera's on and and do what you do and then it's about what feels right Right. Like literally in that moment, like, oh, you know, what that whole discussion we had yesterday, forget about it. Just do that. You know what I mean? And, and, and you're just kind of constantly trying to because it, you, you're constantly trying to keep the characters grounded and keep the situations grounded, even if they're ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances, you know, um, um, and, and, and going back to like with, with, with Kanan, that's what's so beautiful about the piece to me is that the audience knows the monster, uh, you know, and the 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 the, the brute that Kanan was. But this is a story of exploring the innocence of a teenager who's being raised by this single mom who's just, you know, pimply face awkward, you know, like we all are as teenagers mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. And it's like these are the life circumstances um, and some of the decisions that he made that led him to that place. Um, so it's a it's a constant collaboration, in my opinion. Right. How, how how often is Fifty on on set or in the process of kind of guiding the character Kanan? Is how how it hands on? You know, is 50, you know Fifty yeah. busy man. Yeah, Fifty got. 50, 50 busy. <laughs> yeah. He got like a million shows, so. Yeah, he got 2,000 shows. And, no, but I think with, with uh, uh, credit to, salute to 50 and, and uh, Courtney Kemp and Sasha Penn, who actually created it, our show, um, great collaborator again. Um, but 50, you know, this is, in essence, there's a lot of his actual life in this story. Yeah. So it was, it was about being true to that, you know what I mean? And it was about really capturing that that essence of, of authenticity okay uh patina miller uh, is here uh power book three raising canaan uh omar epps the icon he's here july 18th sunday on stars you have questions call us up let's go to militia who's in mississippi is it Mil Malicia? militia militia melcy Oh damn! I'm all the way off, man. I'm <laughs> shit, Patina. I wasn't, you know. Good thing I didn't enter no spelling bees. I can't. I, uh, but well, good to meet you, Grand Rising. Grand Rising. Say hello to these stars. Hello, this is Melcy from Jackson, Mississippi. I'm so excited for stars to come on on Sunday, and I'm very excited to see Omar back on the scene. What's mm -hmm. up, Power Family? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Our family, I like that. It is a family, though, right, Mel? See, it's, it's we all, we, we all, all sitting and waiting. Now, do you guys ever feel any pressure on making these roles, you know, really stand out? Like, I, you know what? I don't understand, Omar. Maybe you can you can answer me this. And uh, both of you are award-winning um, actors. Is I don't understand why the series itself hasn't won, you know, the bigger awards. I know you, you it's been some NAACP awards and that's a huge award in itself. Not let me not let me not say that. That's a huge award in itself. But the Emmys, you know, the daytime awards, why 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 do you suppose, you know, isn't it time for this show to win some of these awards, Omar? I mean Just, that's that's why we got P Killer. That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> we coming. We coming and, and um you know, I, I, you know, it's just uh, that's a bigger conversation, but you know, it's about what's what's really relevant to culture. You know, awards are all of the awards are based on a group of people who are deciding. So it's like, well, who's that group of people that are deciding, yeah. and what are their criteria, and how how do we give them 
the credence to make decisions for all of us when, you know, the, the, the people on the streets and, and out at large in the community feel like this. They feel a different way, you know what I mean? And so it's all, it's kind of a, a game in a sense, but I feel like, you know, with the with a show like this um, and, and with power in general, I just want to say this about Courtney Kemp, like people have been asking me, you know, oh, they keep they're doing all these spinoffs and in, in, in this and that, and I'm like, yeah, well, Dick Wolf does the same thing. You don't mm-hmm. say nothing about tell that. It, tell it, come on why, now. Why are you saying okay. it about this powerful black woman who's doing? Hey. You know what I mean? Like doing the same thing, and, and it's time for us to get busy and get past these boundaries and things that we have um, in society. So, you know, I think you know, I'm I feel cool because I'm I'm riding I'm riding the coattails of Bettina. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rob, you know, Patina is interesting because I know Amari Hardwick, Notori, um, um, Notori won three, um, three NAACP Image Awards, the show won an NAACP Image Awards. So salute to the NAACP uh, for recognizing the show. But, I, you know, I think, you know, the Golden Globes and, and the Emmys uh, should be recognizing. All of that. All, all of that. that should be recognizing. We want show. all of it, yo. You know what time it is, Wait, mm-hmm. We want all the smoke. We want mm-hmm. all of it. Mm-hmm. Come uh, on, Omar. You I mean, better. Not, yes. I mean, halfway. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And and this is what it is. So it, it is what it is. We, we, so now we out there. We put everything you know, into this. You know? Yeah. Exactly. It's, the, it's a culture pusher. Um, um uh, Melcy, thank you for calling in, Melcy. We team power. We got yep, you. All right, power right. family. Congratulations, and I'll see you guys Sunday. All right, yes. you citizen. Man, Thanks, she, Wayne. I'm on it. She already got the popcorn pop, Omar. Yep. She's she ready. <laughs> Uh, Mike, Mike, what up? Mike in Maryland. What's popping, Mike? Hey, Mikey. What's going on? What's going on? Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Grand what Rising. up, King? Yes, sir. Hey, look, I'm excited. I, I'm i going to keep it real with you. I didn't even know that both of y'all was on power. Now that I know that y'all on power, I'm even more excited. You know what I'm saying? To have two <laughs> black, you know, icons of the black community, man. That's, exi- that's exciting. And then come from where power was to now. You know, in the beginning, I didn't even like Power in the beginning. Like, I, my ex-girlfriend would be like, let's go watch Power Boom, watch it with me. <laughs> like, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that show dumb. And now I get on people like, bro, don't call Power dumb. Like, that's the best show out here. <laughs> I, I really agree. Like, that's the best show out here, really. I'm excited. As soon as I get off early Monday morning, I'm going straight to my house to watch Power. Like, that's that's all rip. But it's I, funny yes. that you did an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, I, but I'm I'm just really excited, man, just to know that, you know, even Patina Miller, you know what I'm saying, I, the Hunger Games, you know, you on power, man, I'm excited as well. So, you know, I just, y'all keep up the great work, man. Sway in the morning, y'all keep up the great work. Sway, Tracy G, y'all keep up the great work, man. I'm I'm excited for all y'all, man. Hit up Aww. Heather, she on vacation this week, too. Hit up Heather. You know, oh, you know your girl on, on a, somewhere, she on somebody's beachfront, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, HB. <laughs> Happy you know, hour. Yeah. She know you know how she does it. Uh, hey, uh, Mike, you a citizen? Thank you, That's DB. DB, you want to jump in? Yeah, of course. Um, so my question is for for both Omar and Patina. Um, Omar, um, we've had actors uh, who have you know been in the industry for for a number of years who have talked about you know they might have played a role that has you know fans look at it as an iconic character, but then they also want to differentiate that portrayal or that performance from everything they do after that. And I was just wondering how you, you know, some you, you don't want people to sit there and look at DJ GQ every time you <laughs> star in a film. So I wanted to know how you approach each role and, and look back like, all right, I already did this with this character. Let me find something different and, and, and a different approach with this new character I'm doing. And for Patina, um, you know, for a lot of people, this is their first time getting to know you um, in, in this uh, role. So I just wanted mm-hmm. to know how you, when you're performing with your co-stars, how do you stand out so that people take notice of your abilities as an actor and not overshadow your co-stars? <laughs> wow. That's a great <laughs> question. That is, <laughs> yeah. Who want to go first? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I think for me, you know, it's all about, I mean, the, 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 I, look at, I look at my career as a mosaic. And, you know, each role is sort of a piece of a puzzle. Um, There's not one over the other. And, you know, not only just being a black actor, but just an actor in general. Like sometimes you can, they can try to box you into a a certain thing. And so that's why, you know, I I like to make it weird. Like we're just going to throw curveballs, you know, every time that we, we can, 
we can do it and in, in, in the process so that, you know, you have to sometimes create your own opportunities um, because the business is, is, uh, is a, it's a, it's a strange business and they'll just try to lock you in and okay, you're the bodybuilding guy or you're the, yeah. you know, the, the running guy or the, the action guy or whatever. And uh, I mean, even you look at someone like Kevin Hart, who's now doing drama and, or uh, Tom Hanks or like, we all have these capabilities. We just need the opportunities. Um, yeah. And so, you know, you just have to keep pushing and keep pushing until these opportunities come and then take advantage of them. Okay. Yeah. And I think for me, um, I never really worry about how I'm going to stand out. I think for me, I, I'm, I'm an actor and I think about the character. I think about the work. Um, I focus on that stuff. I think about um, how can I elevate what I'm doing, right? Like, how can I get this, this, this character's point across? I never think about, oh, crap, how am I going to stand out in this scene? I think if I'm standing in my truth in the character and really doing the work, and if it's right, it's going to stand out anyways. And so I just come from a place of always trying to be grounded with each character that I do, you know, whether it's on stage or in a film like The Hunger Games or now coming to Raquel, I try to find bits and pieces of um, myself and all of my characters, and I try to ground them in truth. And for me, I'm always, I always try to go for the inner, right? Like the, 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 the heart of the, the character, the message and all that. And so I, I try not to get wrapped up in like, ooh, can I stand out? Because then it just looks a hot mess. And then it's not real. And then I'm not really in character and I'm not being honest in what I'm doing. So to answer your question, I don't really think about all of that. I just kind of try to do the work. You know, I've, I've trained a lot. I'm, uh, I'm a trained actress. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what I'm doing. And Let so, know. you know, I stick, to, I stick to what I'm doing. And so that's really it. Talk your shit, Patina. I hear you. She trained. <laughs> Come on. That's a Tony Award winner. This ain't no, <laughs> she ain't coming off of Instagram and falling into a role. Uh-huh. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> she, she she put in the time, okay? You yeah, I've been to, ready. I've been ready for this. Yes. There you go. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, Patina. I see you. Give her a round of applause talking yes. that shit. You know, it's our first interview, so it's really formal and cordial. You know, the next one come up with, oh, and it's going to be a whole nother different situation, Patina. Okay? <laughs> Omar, right. oh, Omar is family. We we just, we laugh and we laugh when we talk, you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but I will say this. Um, you know, I met you through your work, oh, you know, and, and some of the people you worked with, you know. You've been solid since day one, man. And yep. you've, been, you've been repping us 1,010%. And you are easily a pivotal um person in our culture and how we moved it through the 90s to now people always say the 90s but i say the 90s to now moving forward so omar epps thank you for your contributions you've inspired so many different people brother including myself and i think i'm older than you so (laughs) so thank you all right and patina thank you for being on the show today congratulations on power congratulations so much all Thanks right, for having me. you killing it. Power Book y'all. Three Sunday on Stars. Make sure y'all watch it. Okay, y'all have a beautiful day. Oh, yes. Uh, Pete, Patina, take care. All right, y'all citizens. Right. I swear to morning. Yes. Sir.